YouTubers, welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. We're in Phoenix, and uh, winter's over here. That's why we live here. <laughs> we don't have our building finished yet. It was another delay, but right now we've got the counter countertops going in. That's the next project. And then we got the uh, bookshelves in the bookstore. And then I believe we may be done. <laughs> All right, so yeah, thank you for your patience. So as as you well know, we got our bathrooms back, and that was the most important thing. So during this uh, sewer pandemic we had here, we never canceled one service or canceled one counseling appointment, not one. So if the devil pulled this stunt, if he did. That's Latin. All right, got a good Bible study for you tonight. Thank you for coming out. Let's do the fun part. It's just nothing but giggles. Here's the announcements. Seminar next Friday, part four, the final, The Invisible World. And here's all of our teachings, including The Visible World. It's on our YouTube teaching channel. YouTube.com slash House of Feeling AZ. Um, I've been on the radio for 21 years now. I just had my anniversary. And you can go to the home page on the website and you just click the media button and then go down to streaming radio. All of my radio shows are archived. If you'd like to help out the ministry, you can switch from uh, Google to Good Search and put in our charity name and they will pay us while you surf the web. This is the most important thing. I got this, uh, these two lists here. They're, they're a step-by-step -step guide to healing and deliverance. They work 100% of the time. I got them in several languages, and I think I just got another one in Mongolian. But unfortunately, I haven't had any requests for Mongolian. <laughs> and I have no idea why. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send these out immediately. I send about a half a dozen or a dozen a week. There's a the deliverance training course, 18 classes. You can get it in the bookstore. Not now, the bookstore is still closed, but when it opens, if you have any interest in this ministry, I'd recommend you take the class. If you want to know what's going on today, it was written 2,000 years ago. There's the seven churches of Revelation in the bookstore. Not now, but later. There's our Wednesday night Zoom with Brother Rick and Stephanie and some of the others. Wednesday nights, 6 o'clock, Mountain Time, Arizona Time. And send me an email and I'll send you the code and the password. You can download, download uh, our app, Tithely, and put it on your phone for donations if you want to. Thank you. Uh, next week, the fourth Saturday of the month, is our prayer time at the Healing House. Uh, please come and pray for our ministry, if you would. Starts at 11 o'clock next door, next Saturday. And then I go on at noon here for the deliverance training course. Next Saturday, prayer, training. Yeah. Good. Good. These are exciting. Our children's deliverance service is coming up. Uh, is you and Erica doing it, or is Eric? Erica is, yeah. Our children's delivery service is March 2nd, Saturday at 10 o'clock. Pre-teens only. This is a fabulous service. You wouldn't believe the kids getting delivered. They're easy to get delivered. They don't have a lot of religious configurations in their mind, blocking their deliverance like adults do. It's really exciting if you like kids. Most people don't like kids, but if you happen to like kids, I wish you come to that service. It's, it's, it's heartwarming. Uh, those of you who don't have a heart, please don't come to that service. Uh, 
please come down here tonight and we'll work on that first. That and then the kids. See, got to do stuff in order. The donation boxes are on the doors. All the doors are now locked. You cannot leave. There's PayPal on the website. We get a lot of donations off that, and I sure thank you for it. Don't forget about my radio programs. On 10, 10 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday, and then I'm on in the afternoons on Saturday and Sunday. These programs are a little bit on the R-rated, most are GP, so they're not really for everybody. Yeah. So look at the titles first before you listen to it. I'm also on Sundays at 8 o'clock in the morning on 1100 AM. That's a conservative talk radio station. And then an hour later, I'm on my podcast. Sunday mornings, twitch.tv, and just put in HCCADC, and uh, we're together. I'll be in North Carolina in April at the, the end of Last Resort. <laughs> uh, for some reason, that don't sound good. <laughs> well, I'm taking a shot at it. I'll see you in North Carolina on April 18th, 19th, and 20th. See you then. And a good time will be had by all. <clears throat> YouTubers, remember to set up your ambush team in your church. Two or three of you need to get together and pick off the sick people one at a time. And it will work because I did it years ago when I was at the Dream Center. Ladies, Mondays and Tuesdays are your special days. You got your Zoom on Mondays. You got your in person meeting here on Tuesdays. Ladies only. And it's a powerful service, very anointed with Julie and some of the others. Please don't miss it. I wrote three books that you, you cannot purchase at this time, but soon, later on, when the, when the bookstores open, here they are. Mental Illness, Healing, Satan. Yeah. This uh, healing book, Atonement and Healing, that thing is a fantastic reference guide. It's real easy to look up. You pick the subject, poop. All the scriptures are right there. Bang, just like that. Healing and deliverance, right there. Handy to have around if you're in, if you're in the ministry. Tonight and yesterday, Brother Rick was here. Great service. We're on YouTube and Rumble. That's where I am tonight. Then the rebroadcast, of course, on these platforms here. You can watch it there. Share it if you would. Okay. There it is. Just put in H-O-H-H-C-C, and that stands for what? House of Healing, Hardcore Christianity. Yeah. That, that wasn't a trick question. So. Ah, oh, man. Anybody know anybody spoiled? Oh, man. Anybody had somebody spoiled? That kid spoiled? Okay. Pray for him later. Spoiled brats, man, they drive you nuts, don't they? Oh, they're terrible. If you have a, a wealthy family, a lot of times those kids all kind of grow up with a kind of an entitled attitude. And when they get a little older and later in life, they get into all kinds of trouble because they don't fit into regular society because most people are not spoiled. Non-wealthy families can also have spoiled kids if you have favorite kids. If you're a parent that has two, three, four kids, whatever it is, and you favor one over the others, that one can grow up spoiled or entitled. They kind of feel like they're better than everybody else. And it's, sometimes it's not overt. Sometimes it's just, you know, part of their subconscious. Hey, I, I got a sense I'm better than everybody else. I deserve more than anybody else. It's kind of a weird psychiatric illness. Yeah? But it's extremely dangerous and it'll ruin your destiny and your anointing. I'll give, give you a couple of examples of what I mean. A lot of kids, they're all jacked up if they're spoiled brats. They feel like, they feel like they're superior to other kids. They have a kind of a sense that they're owed something that other kids are not, you know. 
And uh, here's one. Ahab's dad was king of Israel, and Ahab grew up spoiled. He got everything. He was given anything he wanted. Money was no object. Any desire he wanted, his parents got for him. No problem. His dad died. He became king. Now we got a spoiled king. What could go wrong? Well, actually, a lot of things went wrong. First Kings chapter 21. Let's take a look at that chapter. It's fascinating. Uh, Ahab had built a castle for himself made out of ivory. And he'd, bu he'd built all kinds of other buildings throughout Israel. And that's what people were narcissists, megalomaniacs, oligarchs. They love to build buildings. They love building stuff. And they usually like to put their name on them. Well, Ahab was no divinity. He was wealthy. He had buildings everywhere. But this guy here, Naboth, had a vineyard next to his ivory tower. And he wanted... He wanted that land. It was right next to his property. And he offered Naboth whatever he wanted for the property. He said, I want to have it for a special garden. You know, Nebuchadnezzar did the same thing. Remember, he had the gigantic gardens next to the palace. Saddam Hussein lived in Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's palace. And the gardens were next door to it, supposedly the eighth wonder of the world. It was spectacular. Well, Ahab wanted a big garden next to his property. And he couldn't do it because Naboth owned the property. Right? He says, I'll give you whatever you want for it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a bigger, better vineyard. It's yours. Or I'll pay you for it. Name your price. Naboth said, Jehovah forbid for me to do it, but I should give you my inheritance from my father's. Now, why did he say that? And Ahab came home to, home to his house. Now, spoiled people, uh, the, there's one word they can't stand to hear. It's a short word. Narcissists, spoiled people, entitled people, arrogant people, prideful people have one word that gives them diarrhea and projectile vomiting at the same time. No. No. They don't like to be told no. Okay. Brother Mike, my, my wife, no. Don't raise your hand. I don't want to get involved with your wife. He goes into the house, and he's sick. Now, in Leviticus 25 and Numbers 36, Jehovah told the Jews, you are not allowed to give away your inheritance. Your land, your property, whatever it is, you have to save it for your descendants. You're not allowed to give it away. It was his method of, of uh, social welfare so that families would not become impoverished. Okay? You could sell all kinds of stuff in your family. There's no problem, but your inheritance... Your land was not to be sold. It had to be transferred down to your children, right? So he, Naboth was obeying the Lord and told him, I cannot give you my inheritance. It's against the law of God. Besides that, my kids won't, you know, what if, what if something happens to my kids? I'm not allowed to do that. Ahab laid down on his bed. Uh, it doesn't say it here, but uh, he was sucking his thumb. And he turned his face to the wall, staring at the wall, sucking. And he would not eat. He was so upset, he was emotionally ill. Narcissists, entitled people, when they hear the word no, they, they start Parkinson. They, no, how dare you tell me no? Because nobody ever tells them no. It's always yes. He's sick. Well, he had married a woman who was chock full of demons. Her name was Jezebel. Jezebel. Woo! I'll tell you what, she ran the house. 
why is your spirit so sad? How come you're not eating? He says, well, let me tell you, I talked to Naboth, my neighbor, and, and I asked him to give me this land. I said, I'll pay you whatever you want for it. I'll trade you whatever you want. Anything you want, just tell me what you need. I got it. Just give me the property. And he said, no. And Jezebel now is mad. And she says, she sees Ahab as a, as a wuss. Uh, Ahab's easy to dominate. She dominates him. She's smarter than him. She's stronger than he is. She's more aggressive than he is. Now nobody here has a wife like that. Uh, if you did, you'd already be down here praying. But she was a dominant, pushy, broad, and had a wicked streak in her. That's the kind of person you want to stay away from. Sometimes you can't, though. Sometimes you work with them. And you can't get away from them. And they want to control everybody, dominate everybody. They want the attention to go to them. I'm the spotlight. You do the work, that kind of thing. Jesse, vicious, powerful, smart, cunning, brilliant. Ahab, a wussy, cowardly, weak, gutless. Hey, get up and eat, you know. You're the king. What are you talking about? I'll handle this for you. So she writes letters, forges Ahab's name on them. See her, her mind, brilliant, cunning. She sends them all out to the elders. And they get these letters. She talks about Naboth. And she said, well, we need to proclaim a fast. And remember, Ahab signed it. She forged his name on it, his seal, stamped it on there. Bring Naboth up, and uh, get two sons of Belial. What's Belial? Yeah, it was a Hebrew word, another word for Satan. Two sons of Satan, and uh, tell them to come up and give us a bunch of pack of lies. Okay, and we we see this all the time. Uh, it's called the watching the news. Everybody on the news is a pathological liar. It's unbelievable how many people on the news are lying. You can't trust anything anybody says anymore. It's at epidemic proportions. These two guys are going to lie on the stand. What a surprise. They were going to say, Naboth, they framed him. They said, you're a blasphemer. Blasphemer was a crime punishable by death. You got stoned if you were a blasphemer of Jehovah, the Hebrew God. So they did. They uh, got together. They put the guy, guy on trial. They read the letters. They found him guilty. The, the two witnesses came up and lied about him. And they took him out and stoned him. Murdered him in cold blood. Didn't even give him a burial. Just left him sit there with a stack of stones on him, and the dogs came up and ate him. Okay. Why? Because he refused to disobey the Lord and give away his family's inheritance. Naboth is dead, so go get your vineyard, honey. She patted him on his fanny. He stopped sucking his thumb, got dressed, had, had dinner, ran out to his vineyard like Christmas morning. I did that when I was a kid, Christmas morning. Couldn't hardly fall asleep Christmas Eve. And then Christmas morning, I got up and just bolted downstairs. Wasn't anything there, but it was a fun, the process was fun. Guess what? God saw that whole thing. God watched the whole thing go down. So he goes to Elijah, right? And he says, hey. Go down to Ahab. He's already run down there to grab the vineyard. This happened right away. There was no delay. 
As soon as he went down to the vineyard, Jehovah called Elisha. He's down there. He took the land from Naboth. And here's what I want you to tell him. Hey, you stole that land from Naboth. Then you murdered him in cold blood. The dogs ate him, right? Guess what? <clears throat> Paul explained it in Galatians. It applies to Christians today. Whatever a man or woman sows, that's what you're going to get. It's an unfailing law. Christian or sinner, it doesn't matter. If you sow to the Spirit, you'll get the anointing. You'll get your destiny. You'll get a deliverance. You'll get healed. If you sow to your flesh, ugh, you reap corruption. Paul said that, right? So here it is. God's going to give Ahab exactly what he gave Naboth. And then he says, I'm going to wipe out your whole family. Since you killed Naboth and he'll never see his family again, you're not going to see your family again. I'm going to wipe out all of them, just like I did these two kings who stabbed me in the back. You provoked me to anger by murdering that guy and stealing his land. And any sin the kin king committed went right on to Israel. So the whole country was then guilty of this murder. Hmm? Yeah. Parents sin. The sin goes to the kids goes right down to the kids. Any parents come to me in counseling and go, well, I don't understand what my kids are doing. And we take a look at their lives and go, now here's why they're doing it. You did that. You did this. You lived like that. You stole this. You lied about that. All that went right down to the kids. Now they're doing it. That's how the system works, right? And then he says, Jesse, Jesse's in trouble now, too. She instigated the whole thing. You could have stopped her. You should have stopped her. And you didn't stop her. Wow. You raise your kids spoiled. You raise them entitled. You're a codependent parent. You don't watch what they're doing. They go out and screw their own uh, lives up. It dumps back on you. Now the parent is in agony because they didn't train up the child in the way they should go. That's how the system works. And guess what? The dogs ate Naboth. They're going to eat Jezebel. And then it says there was nobody like Ahab. He, he would sell himself for anything. Spoiled kids. They don't have any sense of values. Whatever I need to do, get what I want. I'll say and do whatever I have to do. Ahab. Came to pass when Arab heard these words. He did what? Wow, amazing. Amazing. He doesn't have Jesus Christ. He doesn't have the cross of Calvary. He doesn't have the blood of Christ like you do. You're far superior to Ahab. Are you not? Your benefits are infinitely superior to Ahab's. Without question. Ahab repents. He hears what Elijah said. He fasts. He lays in sackcloth. And guess what? An unbelievable miracle occurs. What's the point of this story? You. If he didn't have all the benefits you have, and he repented, and God had mercy on him, 
you're a shoe in, Jack. No offense if your name's Jack, but look at Ahab humbling himself before me. What's the key? Forgiveness. Wow, what's the key to restoration? You gotta humble yourselves. Wow. I would say 5,000 people, 10,000 over the years have come to my services or somebody else's service. And they sit in the back there. And during the altar call, they see all these people getting either healed or delivered. But they just keep sitting there. They just sit there. They don't do anything. Why not? Why don't they do anything? You're wondering that. They can't humble themselves. It's too embarrassing. They can't do it. They're worried about how they look. This place is crazy. There's some guy up there with a bucket. My God, believable. Let's get the heck out of here. Why, why are they leaving? They're too embarrassed. They, they can't do it. I've had several hundred people over the years tell me, you know, I don't really like to pray out loud. Seriously, I'm not joking. I don't like to pray out loud. I said, well, go ahead and repent of it. They look at it, oh, repent of what? Being, having a coward spirit and not praying to your heavenly father out loud. What difference does it make? Just pray out loud right now. He wants to hear you. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. You guys confess it. Say it. Go ahead. And if they don't say anything, then I slap them, and then God blesses them. And Look, Ahab's humbling himself. The, the, the key to miracles, Ahab. Can you believe that? Ahab is your teacher tonight, the rottenest king ever in Israel. He humbles himself before me, says the Lord. I will not bring the evil in his days. He forgives him. He postpones it. Judgment is postponed. You can be delivered of your generational curses, the sins of your parents, the sins of your grandparents, all the witchcraft in your family. How many imbeciles are in your family? That's, don't raise your hand, but I know some of you. There's a lot. You can be delivered of all the stupidity of your ignorant relatives. Completely delivered. You don't have to live with them one more day. He passed it on to the next generation. Ahab was forgiven. Ahab made you look like a saint. This guy was a professional sinner. He was an idolater. Can you imagine that? That's worse than murdering people. Idolatry? That's the worst thing you can do. He was a piece of garbage. Not so. He had the ticket. Humble. Ticket to miracles. Saved his life. Some other people are raised spoiled, aren't they? Oh, wow. Some of them have codependent parents. <clears throat> I like King David. He was the Peter of the Old Testament. King David was massively jacked up. I really like him. Because I like people I can relate to that give me comfort. I don't like to relate to people that, you know, live, you know, really great lives, you know, feel comfortable with it. I like a loser mixed in. King David was a hacking loser. He was a terrible parent. He was very much like a mother. And there are, there are husbands and fathers that are like mothers. They love too much. They love too much and they don't. Discipline their kids. They let them get away with stuff. They don't rein them in. They don't make them stop stuff. They don't make them responsible for stuff. 
You ever heard of Antifa or BLM? Pe kids going crazy. If you went back in their childhood, what was going on there? Permissive parenting. No discipline. No spankings. Remember the spankings? Most of you don't, but at my age, it's vivid because to us older folks, you could get whipped in school. That's a lawsuit. No, it wasn't a lawsuit. Nobody sued anybody. And if you told your parents, hey, I had to take the wood to your son today, they said, oh, well, go ahead and do it tomorrow. <laughs> and then you'd stop doing that behavior. <gasps> Somebody would change with a whipping? You're kidding. They need a timeout with their video camera and their stuff. No, you go, and then if you got whipped with a board with holes in it, you remembered it for a week. If it had holes in it, nothing stopped it until it hit this area. Ouch! Ow! I got whipped one time, there was another kid in there with me. I was in fourth grade, and I didn't want to cry. That's, that's too embarrassing. So I backed up against the wall and squeezed my fanny. And I gritted on two. I couldn't even breathe. And to this day, I still hear the words, grab your ankles. I still can't get it out of there. Grab your ankles. Crack is what it sounded like. I headed for the wall, see? Notice this move, and then bang, that was there. Oh, squeeze. <laughs> the other guy saw me get it. He turned white. <laughs> he was an African-American. <laughs> Solomon. You know the story. It was fantastic. King David had a chit-chat with him before he died, remember? And he was trying to get his son not to make all the mistakes he made, essentially. You know, that's what a good dad does, if they care. They screwed their life up left and right, but they don't want their kid to do it. We don't have any good dads here tonight, but there are dads out there who do care about their kids, and they'll give them fatherly advice and that's what King David said he said keep the Lord keep his commandments keep his statutes keep his judgment keep his testimonies do what's written in the law of Moses so you may prosper in all you do and whatever you turn yourself for Solomon did it remember this is a great story God comes to him and he, the guy's only a teenager. What could go wrong? Teenager's the king. And he asked God, give me wisdom to do the right thing. He listened to his dad, believe it or not. Yeah. Solomon was raised spoiled. Absalom was raised spoiled. You know, uh, all the kids were spoiled. Everybody got everything they wanted. They were living in the king's house. Everybody had everything they wanted. Whatever they wanted, they had servants. Servants waiting on kids. Can you imagine? You can't ruin a kid any quicker than having servants waiting on them. You talk about crazy kids when they grow up. They're nuts. You get in the real world, nobody waits on you. People that are supposed to wait on you don't wait on you. Not these guys. Everything handed to them on a silver platter. They ate before everybody else. They got the best food. And they grew up like that. King Solomon, teenager, goes, man, you know what? I'm going to take my dad's advice for once. And guess what happened? You know what happened? Great story. God gave him wisdom and knowledge and gave him everything he didn't ask for. Paul said it better, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can 
or ask. You asked for this, God gave you that. God's a good God. He likes giving. It makes him feel good. It's an emotional thing for him. His king kingdom was greatly established. That's putting it mildly. Solomon was the most intelligent human being that ever lived. Wisdom, riches, honor. Look at all these things he had. It's all in chapter 3 of 1 Kings. He, he built a temple of God. Uh, God gave him a vision. A glory cloud filled the temple when it was dedicated. Remember? He, he had lengthened days. He had agriculture. He reigned for 40 years. He had untold amount of livestock. R farmland, unbelievable. 40,000 horse stalls. The Queen of Sheba and everybody else came from everywhere to get the wisdom of Solomon. Spectacular, to say the least. Look at Look at what happened to him though. You know, I didn't go over the story in detail because you already know it, but Solomon, because he reverted back to his childhood of being spoiled, suddenly, suddenly started to make some serious mistakes because he never had to work for anything in his life. God gave him everything. And now he starts blowing it. Spoiled kids, entitled kids, don't have discipline. If you don't have to work for something, you don't really appreciate it that much. He violates the laws of God now, doesn't he? Multiplying horses, that was against the law of Moses. Having a bunch of wives against the law of Moses, Deuteronomy 17. He's buying horses from Egypt. First Kings chapter 10. He multiplied silver and gold. The guy was richer than anybody on the planet. That was against the law of Moses, Deuteronomy 17. He got involved with a bunch of foreign women. That was a sin against the law of Moses, Exodus 23 and 34. Deuteronomy 7, Joshua 20. You weren't supposed to. Get involved with foreign women. Why? Idol worshipers. <clears throat> he never trained his son, Rehoboam. Second Chronicles chapter 12. His son was an undisciplined imbecile who led Israel right down the toilet. He became like his dad, a permissive parent. His kids were all jacked up. He went into idolatry, idol worship, false gods. He had 600 wives, 300 concubines. You know he's nuts now. You can't even take care of one wife. I got one wife and I got my hands completely full. I mean, it's always something. The guy married Pharaoh's daughter. Now you're really asking for it. One foolish decision after the other. He built monuments to himself everywhere. Here it is. This is really interesting. These are all the buildings that he uh, created just, to, just where he lived, not including the rest of Israel. It was spectacular. He was the richest man in the world and the smartest man in the world. Everybody came to see what he built. Everybody came to see what he had to say. He was the most famous person on the planet, and these are the these are the uh, First Kings chapter three. These were all the buildings that they built. This is uh, the the original temple. Obviously, Herod's temple that Jesus was in was much larger than this one. But anyway, this is the outer court, the inner court in there, and the holy of holies was in there. Right then, he lived over here, there. Pharaoh's daughter lived there. I mean, it was unbelievable. The guy was beyond rich. Richer than Elon Musk. Literally. God had given him so much. 
It was literally unbelievable. And people that build monuments to themselves like to do what? It's, a, it's an ego trip. You put your name on it. Here's the richest city in the world. What is that one? Dubai. Okay. This is where billionaires come to sin. They don't even go to Las Vegas anymore. They go here. The sinning is unbelievable. You can get anything you want there. 14-year-old girl, 12-year-old girl, any form of gambling you want. No limits on gambling. Whales from all over the world fly into Dubai. Billions of dollars. Party on. They get everything there. Anything and everything. Who's that guy? You put your name on the building. That's human nature. Hey, I built that. Solomon, same. And in Hebrews chapter 11, Solomon never even got named in the Hall of Fame of Faith. He was left out. The nation of Israel, <laughs> Went right down the toilet after he died. Everything was lost. All in buildings. All torn down. Whatever a man sows, that what he reaps. Would have never happened had it wasn't been for King David. He wouldn't discipline his kids. They all weren't entitled. They felt entitled, you know. Amnon saw his half sister and said, "Hey, she's she's bootalicious. I'm, I'm going to do her." What are you talking about? That's against the law of Moses. That your family's. What about your family? You're you're the son of the king. You're going to you're going to do your half sister. Are you serious? What are you thinking about? Well, I think I'm entitled. I think I was raised. Entitled nobody disciplined me. I get to do whatever I want. I'll just do that Correct all the kids raised Entitled Few of these people were ever used by God That's why first Corinthians says God uses the base things of the world the things that are despised the things that are rejected, he uses them first. Well, he doesn't get along well with entitled people. That doesn't go over with the Holy Ghost. Humble people, oh man, he rushes right over to them. Boom, he's on top of them. Broken people, right there. Arrogance, people that think they're owed something. Nothing, nothing. Uh oh, Absalom, King David's firstborn son, right? Firstborn. He should have been king, right? In all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. He had to have an ego trip. What a stroke that is. To know that you're better looking than everybody. Wow, that's a, that's a, I can sympathize with you. I mean, that's a curse. That's like a curse. See? You know, extremes are almost always bad. You know? If you're too good looking, that's like a curse. And if you're rump roast ugly, that's a curse. It's better to be somewhere in the middle like most of the people I'm looking at, right in the middle, right here, that's the best place to be. See? You don't want to be GQ here. You don't want to be vomit here. You want to be right somewhere in here, right? Well, this guy's cursed with drop dead gorgeous. Yeah? And so he feels that way and senses himself as better than everybody else. Entitled and privileged. Because he's gorgeous. He's beautiful. 
Have you ever had a dream where you, you were like gorgeous? Did you wake up and apologize to anybody? Now, obviously, this is the polar opposite. This guy had an egomania because he was gorgeous. Very bad. Then on top of that, permissive parenting on top of This kid's going to go wild. That's a recipe for a disaster. From the sole of his foot, his body was gorgeous. Amazing. 2 Samuel 13. Absalom hated Amnon. Why? Another spoiled, rotten, entitled kid. He rapes his half-sister, which was Absalom's full sister. They had the same parent. Amnon had the same dad. David. He was a half-brother. He raped his full sister. Absalom, then, hates the guy's guts and never forgave him. This is why the Lord taught about forgiveness in the Sermon on the Mount. He taught about forgiving people. He taught about removing ought for people. Why? Absalom wouldn't forgive him and carried ought or bad feelings about him for the rest of his life. He hated him because he raped his sister. What's, what's the big deal about that? Well, rape is a big deal, but on top of that, in Israel, you couldn't get married. You had to die an old maid. No one's going to marry somebody who's not a virgin. So she lost everything. No husband, no kids, no nothing. What's the most important thing to have back then? Kids! Nowadays, nobody wants kids, but back then, everybody wanted kids, and the more kids you had, the more status you had in your family. Everybody wanted kids. Big families were wonderful. Now they're, now they're not. Now it's what? It's, it's under two now, I think. One point something kid per family. What's the statistic? Something similar to that. I forgot exactly. But anyway, now in our society, it's a real low. Back then, it was real high. Everybody wanted kids. She couldn't have any kids. She got raped. She wasn't a virgin. Absalom had ought against Amnon. Ought. What is ought? It's a cancer. It's a cancer. Forgiving people doesn't work. Forgiveness does not work if you have ought. You can forgive them, but if you still have ought, you're still in bondage. Ought's that yucky feeling you have for somebody who screwed you over and stabbed you in the back. You forgave them, but you don't want to see them again. You forgave them, but you can't stand them. You forgave them, but you can't stand their voice. But you forgave them because you went to a forgiveness seminar. That's why Jesus bifurcated them. Forgiveness and ought are different things. Sibling rivalry and fights among siblings are hideous. Have you ever seen a family go through a bad inheritance? Can you believe that? I mean, people are pulling knives on each other, fighting over an estate of a dead parent. I mean, it gets vicious. They don't speak to each other the rest of their lives. Somebody always steals more than they should have. You know, somebody wants to be executor of the estate, and then they pocket this and that. I mean, it gets nasty. I've seen, I've seen dozens of them. They're horrible. Well, guess what? A Absalom said, hey, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill this guy, and... I not only have ought for Amnon, Absalom had ought for King David. You know why? If, if, if you think somebody should have done something and they didn't, you lose respect for them and you start to develop ought for them. That ever happened to you?
happened to me numerous times. It's happened here to me. Here. I've had people on my ministry team give me the green banana and leave because they thought I should do something to this person and I didn't do it. I did something else or I held off on it. They turned on me. They lost respect for me. They left. Happens to everybody. Happened to King David. Absalom did not respect his dad anymore. Why? He let Amnon off from raping his own daughter. He let him off. And Absalom thought something should have been done about him. Why? Codependency. King David loved his sons. He loved them too much. Wouldn't discipline them. They ran amok. Now we got two. I got ought for my brother. I got ought for my dad. What happened? Hell came to Israel. He sets him up to be murdered. Right? He tells the guy, listen, kill him. I'm telling you to do it. Don't worry about it. I'll handle it from there. And what did they do? They set him up. And they murdered him. Remember the story? You remember it. What happened after that happened? Everybody in King David's family said, oh my God, Absalom's coming for all of us. They all ran back to Israel, petrified, scared that they would be next. Now fears moving through the entire family. What happened here? Well, I just summed it up this way instead of going through, you know, a couple chapters for you. Absalom got in trouble after he murdered him, remember? And he thought King David was going to kill him. Of course, he wasn't going to do it. So he disappears and goes to live with his grandfather for two years. David did nothing about Tamar's rape for two years. Then he did nothing about Amnon's murder for three years. He let it go. David brought Absalom back, but wouldn't talk to him for two years. So that means, looks like around seven years, nothing happened. Permissive parenting. Absalom, who hates King David because he wouldn't do anything about Amnon, he had ought for him, decides that King David's too old and needs to be replaced by him. <clears throat> When you're raised entitled, you're spoiled, nobody disciplines you, you think the world is your oyster. You think you can kind of do anything. And he does. He wants to take over Israel. Remember the story? He gets a lot of people to stay with him. King David is so scared, he runs. 2 Samuel 15. David regroups and comes back and wipes out how many people died? 20,000. 20,000 dead soldiers of Absalom were beaten in the battle. Can you imagine that? That's a lot of dead people. All over what? King David never did anything about Amnon when he raped his daughter. The hate built in Absalom. Because his dad had permissive parenting. Wow. It's amazing how 20,000 dead people can be traced back to one little thing. Wow. Yeah, that's what happened to your life. One little thing. One little thing. Hell came to your life. One thing. One little thing. Tried some porn, tried some smoked that, tried to took that, drank that. One, it always starts a little thing. That's what the devil does. He feeds you just a little thing. Something little. We bite on it, and he drives it right to the gates of hell.
That's Rob. Brilliance. Genius. It's genius. Temptation always starts with just something little. Some little thing you get pissed off about. Kind of starts building then. It happened to me years ago. I lost my mind. I was working for this company as a counselor, and I, f I loved the boss, the manager. And I found out he was screwing everybody over on their uh, salary increases. You were supposed to get an annual salary review and a raise. That was a company policy, you get an annual review. You know? And what he was doing was he was stalling it so that sometimes it would go out three to six months past the due date. So as you did that for every employee, you're saving huge amounts of money on salaries. Because instead of an annual review, you're getting a year and a half review. So if you got four, five, six people there, and they're, go they're all going a year and a half before they get a raise, then you're making up total years on people who never got a raise. Correct? I mean, it kind of adds up that way, right? Yeah, well, I found out about that. I was appalled. Couldn't believe it. Needless to say, my attitude soured. I developed ought for this guy. I got so pissed off, I quit, went to another company. Turned out to be a lousy job. I was reaping what I sowed. Once the devil, it was just some little thing, you know, like, that's unfair to treat employees. Like, it sunk into my heart, you know. I got pissed off and cussed the guy out and got mad at him. You know, and I was his favorite counselor. I was his favorite on the staff, me. As you can imagine, that doesn't surprise you. I was a favorite guy. And I turned on him because the devil had put that little thing in there. I, I, I thought I was like a godlike figure. That's unjust. That I got to stand up for justice like an idiot. See how I got caught? Yeah, devil nailed me. I didn't even know there, there was a devil back then. As soon as he puts that little bitty little seed of ought in there, that frustration, that anger, that little thing pissed you off there. Ugh. It starts to grow. And then pretty soon it becomes a trigger. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. When I was in uh, eighth grade, I stole a girly magazine out of a 7-Eleven in California. I lived in Anaheim. And it was a uh, major theft project requiring tremendous intellectual skills on my part. But uh, the, just, just to sum it up quickly, when the guy wasn't looking, I stuffed this magazine down my pants. Went home, and it was, it was called Stag. You, nobody remembers that. But anyway, you're, decades ago, there used to be these girly magazines. Not one of them was Stag. It was a uh, cheap, crappy version of Playboy. Well, that looking at those half-naked women in there, planted a lust seed in my soul. And I noticed after that I had an elevated interest in women's breasts and their Booties, and I started to have. I was in eighth grade, so I started these sex drive things, and I started to have this kind of sensitive urge that I wanted a different kind of magazine. Now I wanted so, and then uh, in ninth ninth grade or something, I found a porno book in a trash can downtown Anaheim. That really, these were explicit. 
hardcore pictures of sex and that seed that I had stolen in that stag magazine in eighth grade now was blooming in ninth grade. The devil's brilliant. He doesn't come at you with a full load of garbage. He just whoop, drops a little seed in there, just some little thing that you don't, sometimes you don't notice it. And later on, it becomes a trigger. Then it's something that manifests you. In your anger, something a little odd turned into a surge of anger, and anger turned into rage. Started out like that. Rape, that rape turned into rebellion in Israel, and 20,000 people died in that war. And Absalom now runs for his life. What happens to him? He gets caught in a tree. He had flowing hair, GQ style. He was gorgeous, you know. Caught in a tree. He's hanging out of the tree like fruit. Joab, Joab. What happened to him? Ought for King David grew into disgust for him. Joab was his best friend for years. His number one servant. Number one. He was his advisor most of his life. Turned on him. King David put out a command. Do not touch Absalom. Why? Permissive parenting. He wouldn't even discipline his son after he had caused a rebellion and the death of 20,000 Jews. Can you imagine that? 20,000 Jews? Right now, the, the, the current war, how many, how many Jews died? 100 and something in this current thing? 100 and something? 100 and something? 20,000? Come on, man. These people don't know what death is over there. What is that war over there? It's an ought war. It's ought. They hate Jews. That was an ought war. Absalom lost respect for his dad. And that ought grew to hate. He raped who? Who did Absalom rape? Anybody read that story? Oh man, that's wicked. Raping all your dad's wives in public are you serious now that isn't odd anymore that's hate hate it's happening over in Israel right now all them hostages they raped them so hard their pelvis is broke right He raped his stepmoms in public. But it only started with something like that. Just a little bit of odd, you know, just a little, a little thing of injustice that you think ought to be fixed and wasn't handled. How do you handle that? How come you didn't fix that? You're a bad person. I don't like that. That bothers me. Wow. A little bit of that grows into divorce. A little bit of that grows into murder. A little bit of something grows into a total disaster.
That's why the Bible says you got to guard your heart. You got to filter out whatever goes in there. Because the devil's always looking to plant something in there. Some little seed of negativity. They don't like me. They don't want me. God's not hearing me. I'm not worthy. Little seed of something grows. Now, are you as bad as this? Of course not. You're never going to be doing that. 20,000 people aren't going to live. But the point is, the process is the same for us. We won't be doing this, but it's the process is the same. None of this would have happened had King David done something about Amnon right after he raped her. This would have never happened. There wouldn't have been 20,000 dead Jews. Your codependent mother could have stopped this when you were young. You would never ended up a drug addict. You didn't ever end it up unable to manage your finances and broke all the time. You would have never un ended up 200 pounds overweight had your parents said, hey, we're disciplining your diet here. We're di King David didn't do it. He couldn't do it. Codependent parents are like a plague. They ruin their children's lives. They won't discipline them. So the devil goes, hey, you're not going to discipline them? I'll take care of them. All I got to do is plant a little seed in there. Frustration, anger, bitterness, thoughts. Little seed of injustice. How dare you? Joab stabs him in the heart while he's hanging in a tree after King David said he wasn't to be touched. Joab, that was an ought murder. Joab knew King David loved his sons. Friendly. He took a knife and stabbed him in the heart while he was hanging out of a tree. Who's he stabbing there? Who'd he stab? His dad. He stabbed Absalom's dad. Joab couldn't believe King David had turned into the screw up. He was. He couldn't believe it. He had dedicated his life. Have you ever dedicated your life to somebody and have them turn around and stab him in the back? A lot of people have. King David stood on the mountain. He said, hey, I want you to number the 12 tribes. Send out auditors. Number them. Joab said, what are you doing? Hey, whoa. Jehovah said, don't number. We don't number our tribes. The other nations number their people. We don't number their people. Jehovah numbers the people. We don't do that. Why bring this sin on Israel? If the king did it, it went through the whole nation. If your parents do it, it goes right down to the kids. He overrules Joab. And they numbered Israel. How many people died in that one? Way more than died in this one. Joab had ought against King David and had it for years. He just held it there until he could take it out on Absalom.
stabbed him right in the chest while he was up hanging in a tree. That's cold. What's the moral of that story? If you keep sowing to your flesh, the devil's going to come along and stab you right in the chest. Most of the churches in Maricopa County that know we exist over here see me as a complete lunatic. <clears throat> they watch me down here during the altar call, you bellowing out for people to repent of their sins. Why am I doing that? They think I'm a psycho, but I've read these stories and I see this seed that gets planted. I saw it planted in me in the past. I see how this causes destruction in people's lives and I preach you know repentance I preach change I preach that stuff nobody else wants to preach Solomon and Absalom fit in right here look at this Jesus said the parable of the faithful servant. Remember this one? Chapter 12 in Luke. Fascinating. You know, that's the one where the ruler leaves and he leaves these people in charge and then he comes back. Remember that story? What's the moral of the story? Here it is. The danger of being a Christian and listening to a thousand sermons over the years, you know what the danger in that is? You're screwing yourself. Oh my God, Mike, that's blasphemy. Yeah, is it? Let's see if it is. The more you know and the more Word of God you get in you, and if you don't do it, the more legal rights the devil has to kick your face in. I've been going to church for years, Brother Mike. I, every time I hear that, I go, oh, gosh, I get a sick feeling. Like, You've been in church for years? Oh, no. Oh, no. You're not here for deliverance, right? Yeah, I got to get deliverance. Oh, no. Jeez. God, hold on a minute. I had given Kelly's phone number. I get out of it quick. You've been in church for years? My God, you're nuts. Why? To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is. Brother Mike, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Creeflo Dollar doesn't teach that. The more you go to church and not do it, the sicker you become. The more truth you get, the worse it's going to go for you. Solomon, Absalom, they knew everything. They had been taught the law from the time they were this high. The result of that, hang in a tree and have somebody stab you in your chest. The result of that, become a sex addict and an idolater. And you die and your nation is destroyed. Adam heard it. Be sure your sin will find you out. He overheard it when he told Cain that. And he's sitting in the background going, tell me about it. Be sure your sin will find you out.
to whom much is given, much is required. To whom men have committed much, they will expect and ask more from you. Imagine that, telling somebody to go to church could be the worst thing to tell them. 1 John chapter 2 summarizes Solomon and Absalom, doesn't it? Yeah. They had no discipline. They didn't have to work for anything. Everything was handed to them. And they lived by the lust of their eyes. The lust of their flesh and the pride of their life. Absalom was dropped dead gorgeous. Pride and vanity took him over. Solomon had everything. Multi-billionaire. Fame, you can't even believe. Fame everywhere. Women, any woman he wanted. Can you imagine that? That's the smartest guy in the world now. 600 wives. Smartest guy in the world? Really? 300 concubines? Listen, in the th there's only 365 days in a year at last count. Now, I'm not a math major, but I think I got that one. Let's throw in a leap year. Go ahead, throw it in. That means you gotta, you got to see two to three wives a night. Two to three wives a night. A porn star couldn't do that. Are you sick? Yeah, he was. He was sick. That means he's having orgies. Correct? 365 and 900, okay? Is that the math? Two to three a night, am I right? Nobody here, everybody dropped out of math here? Great, <laughs> fine. Forget about it then. This guy's sick. He's demon possessed. His lust of his flesh ran wild. Your lust of your flesh run wild when your parents don't love you enough to take care of you by disciplining you. They let you run wild so you can die and die young. Solomon destroyed the nation of Israel. You know who took his place? Yeah. His undisciplined, idiotic, imbecilic son whom he did not train The temple was torn to shreds. King Herod had to rebuild the whole thing. What was that 600 years later, 550 years later, something like that? Had to rebuild the whole thing. Shocking. Why? Just a little, the devil got a little thing in, just a little thing. Can aggravate you, and then it, then it turns into a, a deal. Then it turns into a big deal. Huh? Anybody married knows what I'm talking about. You know, you just get married and you come home and tired and left your socks over there. Yeah, I left my socks there. One of my wives didn't like my socks there. I didn't mean to do it. I was just tired. I took them off. I didn't feel like I got up, wasn't thinking. Just finished up a TV show. Let's make a deal. I got up and left my socks there. It's no big deal, but you know, you start leaving your socks there again and over and over. All of a sudden, the devil just plants. Well, that's disrespectful. You're getting disrespected with them socks, okay? And a little, a little thing of ought, sock art, see, <laughs> goes right in there, and that sock art 
then starts to spread to underwear ought. <laughs> then t-shirt ought, and all of a sudden it's a marital issue, and they're in my office for marriage counseling. But it started with sex. Yeah. yeah. Come on, ladies. When you're dating, when you're dating, things are different. Are they not? You go out to eat. You don't pass gas. <laughs> Absolutely. You hold that. I need to go powder my nose. Broom. <laughs> now, you start doing that when you're married. All of a sudden, it happens once. No big deal. But all of a sudden, if, it's, if it starts cranking, that becomes gas hot. For you, sir, you're my prop today. Goes right in there, sir. Gas hot. Now, pretty soon that starts to get to something else. Oh, it's gas hot and socks. Okay, you're, you're gassing and you're leaving your socks there? Wait a minute. Now, now it starts to add up. I'm making a joke, but it, it's a process that he uses on King David. It, Absalom. It, the, a little thing suddenly gets, keeps getting bigger. Then it becomes a problem. Then you're starting to get frustrated. Then you're starting to get angry. And then rage comes. And it all, the devil started it out. He, he likes to start little stuff, then he builds on it. He's a master builder. When you're spoiled, you live out of the lust of your flesh. I want that. I want this. I want it. You can have it. You get it. That's the worst thing you can do is give your kid too much stuff, right? You can teach them the value of working. For the world will pass away. Parago, what does that mean? Tr travel through. The world transitions through. Nothing can stop it, right? But he who does the will of God may know. Remains throughout eternity. Absalom, Solomon, some of you are like tougher Christians. This fish, this blowfish, is normally a little guy. When he's threatened or when he's mating, he puffs up. He finds a hot puffer fish, babe. Some of them are really good looking, I guess. And he gets around this hot babe, and to show off, he goes into his puff, puff daddy routine. Boom, he makes himself big. Boy. How about this one, honey? Boom. Puff or fish. Paul knew about this fish. Sure did. He talked about it in the text. He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Knowledge, fusiao, inflates your ego. But unconditional love, agape, edifies. First Corinthians 13, ch charity, agape, unconditional love is patient people and kind it does not envy but charity uh, vaunts itself up no it doesn't it does the opposite Pepper, who am I vanity brags love doesn't Love is the opposite of a TV preacher. No. You got to pump up the person to make a star out of them, to get donations to come in and a following. No, Paul was the opposite of that. Fusiao, puffer fish. Colossians chapter 2. I had to take this out of a couple of versions, but. Charismatics and prophetics commit these sins all the time. They get involved with a lot of strange 
strange fire miracles, I call them. Different things. Paul warned against it. He said, don't tolerate people who try to run your life, ordering you to bow and scrape for things, insisting that you join their obsession with angels and that you seek out visions, for they are a lot of hot air. Fusiao, puff, they're all puffed up. Puffing up, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> I went to hell. I went to heaven. Puff. You didn't. I saw a 50 foot angel. I saw a three foot one. Poof. Puffer fish. That's what that word means. Stick your chest out as you puff your fish. So the demons give you these strange fire miracles, these weird, weird spiritual experiences. Why? So you would you sense your, hey, I got some special insight with God. You don't have it. Wow. I go to heaven. 20-foot angels follow me around. Come on now. Here's uh, the Amplified Bible. Let no one defraud you by acting as a, an umpire and, de and declaring you unworthy and disqualifying you for the prize. Insist on self-abasement and worship of angels. What does that mean, self-abasement? Oh, I'm going to do a bunch of religious things to improve my status with God, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have markings. I'm going to have fasting. I'm going to deny myself. I'm not going to, you know. People have said that to me many times. Brother Mike, you believe in fasting? Well, yeah, the biblical. No, no. Uh, this month I'm fasting Hershey's candy bars. You're, are, you're fasting candy bars this month? Yeah, I'm sacrificing the candy bars to the Lord. Stupid. Stop it. You're coming up with fake religious denying of yourself so you can get a vision or see a 30-foot angel. Paul said, don't, work, don't do that. Taking his stand on visions he claims to have. He has seen vainly puffed up, fusia'o, puff for fish, puffing up by his sensuous notions and inflated by his unspiritual Thoughts and fleshly conceit. That's all that stuff is. The key to it all really is in Psalm 51, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. Had Solomon learned this? Had Absalom learned it? Had David learned it? Had Amnon learned it? Amnon was murdered. Why? He thought he could do whatever he wanted. He thought he could have his half-sister. He fell madly in love with her. He developed an obsessive compulsive thought disorder over her. Remember that? He was obsessed with her. Okay? That's what demons do. They get you obsessed with something. You can't live without it. And then when you get it, suddenly they pull the desire back and it deflates. Have you ever heard of a dating service called Christian Mingle? You ever heard of that? It's a familiar spirit service. You get on there and you see, see this hot person on there, and it, the devil plants a seed. It only starts with a little thing, but it's a spark. Wow, that is, that person is great. And you keep going back to that, pulling that one up, and as you more you pull it up and stare at it, the desire starts pounding. He does that with all kinds of things. He pushes you to get something. Then when you get it, all of a sudden you're going, man, is this all there is? This isn't, this isn't what I thought. It deflates. He's doing it deliberately. He wants to create in you a sense of chronic disappointment in life. He wants to give you desires for stuff that you think are fantastic that turn out to be crap. Why? To disappoint you. Chronic disappointments lead to Depression. Serious depression leads to physical illnesses. Severe depression leads to 
suicide. But it doesn't start that way. It always starts disappointment. That was a disappointment. And he gives you another one and another one. Chronic disappointments lead to depression. Helplessness. How do you break it? This is how you break it. Psalm 51. Thank you, Jesus. How'd that go? Mm -hmm. Any questions before we close? Let's go to this group over here. Not that guy. But <laughs> All right. Let's pray then. If Father God, some people here, not very many, were raised without discipline from their parents. They were undisciplined. They got a sense of entitlement. And then after a couple marriages or so, they started to realize that a sense of entitlement is a, a curse. And they had this sense of entitlement that was so deep in their system, they thought they could do anything they wanted to, eat anything they wanted to, believe anything they wanted to, and still be blessed, not knowing that. We were warned our sin will find us out. Our sin always finds us out. There's one exception to that, Lord. If we will repent and stop the sinning, it will not find us out. Righteousness and peace, love and joy, the fruit of the Spirit, then dominate our lives. And I pray now, Lord, for anybody here who was raised by parents who didn't discipline them. They grew up with a low work ethic, poor work ethic, a sense of entitlement, poor money management, poor diets, poor discipline. I'll pray for them tonight, Lord, that you will heal them because I know you're able to do it. I pray for any, here, any person here tonight who has ought against somebody like Absalom did, King David. He disrespected his dad. He didn't have respect for him anymore. He had ought against his dad. He turned on his dad. And the devil murdered him. He wanted him to turn on his dad. He was behind the whole thing. He did it. And I pray for anyone here tonight, Lord, that has ought from anybody in their past, particularly your parents, particularly ex-spouses, particularly old boyfriends and girlfriends who stabbed you in the back, ran off with your money or your kids, or abandon you in your time of need. I pray, Lord, for anyone here has ought against somebody. Because I know that's what cost Absalom his life. He couldn't get away from it. He despised his brother. He despised his dad. And he died. Ugly death. That's what's going to happen to us if we have ought. We have to let it go for everybody there are no exceptions. There's no exceptions. Every single person that hurt me in my past, Lord, I have to release that ought. No questions asked. Even if the person's dead. Even if they're dead. They're not dead to me. If I have ought for them, they're still alive to me. I pray now tonight, Lord, for any person here who has ought against their parents like Absalom had against King David. Like Joab had for King David. 
Anybody here who used to love somebody but lost respect for them? You saw them fail. You saw them do something wrong. You saw them do something dishonest or criminal. And you developed this deep-seated disrespect for the person. They took something from you. They stole your money. They stole your time. They stole your heart. Whatever it was, that is going to come back to destroy you. You're going to always be poor if you don't forgive these people. You're always going to be homeless. You're always going to be destitute. You're always going to be finding a money curse on your life. You have money now, and then later on, you're broke. Then you have money again. Then you're broke again. Then you've got money again. Then you're broke again. That's an ought curse. And most of all, I pray tonight for anybody that has ought against themselves. Anybody has ought against themselves. They don't like their looks. They don't like their body. They don't like their failures, their past failures. They carry them around every year. Every new year, they want to get rid of them. By the end of January, they pick them right back up. Self-ought is the worst one. I shouldn't have married this person. I shouldn't have quit that job. I shouldn't have moved here. I shouldn't have left. I shouldn't have gone. I shouldn't have ate that. I shouldn't have... Ah, self-ought yields regrets. It yields fear of the future, fear of failure, fear, fear of screwing up again. Regrets cause you to fear your future. All that needs to be re removed. All of it has to be removed tonight. Tonight it has to be removed. We've got to do this. We have to do it. Help us, Lord. I know the rapture is coming soon. I know the Antichrist is he's probably out there somewhere probably a kid or something. I don't know. I got bad feelings that we need to, we need to repent. We need to get going. We need to come home. We need, we need to change. That's what we need. I know it. Sense it. Other people sense it. I don't think we have much time left. I could be wrong, but I really don't believe it. You got change now. You got to change now. Are your kids living in sin, serving Satan? Are they? Okay. You can kiss your kids goodbye if you don't repent. Why is that? Because your sin and your demons came from you and went right down to the kids. King David's sins went right down to the kids. Were you a permissive parent? You come down and repent tonight so God can hunt your kids down. The Holy Ghost can hunt them down. He knows exactly where they are. But he's not going to go get them until you repent tonight. Will you do that? Will you do that? If you're ready to repent, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. You're going to repent tonight. You're not going to be like King David's family. No way. You're leaving. Father God, you see these hands right now? These are your future deliverance ministers, your future faith healers, your future Holy Ghost-powered people. There they are. They got their hands up right now. There's your future anointed men and women of God. They got their hands up. I'm asking you to look at them. Stare at them, Lord. Stare at them. I want you to reach out to them tonight. And fix this thing. Whatever is in their past, doesn't matter what it was. I mentioned it. You go fix it. I can't fix it. I don't have any abilities to do anything. You are here. You can fix it. You can fix it. In the name of Jesus. Now come up and see me now. We're going to go to prayer now. Come up to the altar now. If you have something you've got to change, you come up tonight. And the ministry team is going to pray with you. we got a great ministry team here. They care about you. 
They love you. They want to help you. They want to help you. Father wants to help you. That's the most important thing. Father wants to help you. The Lord Jesus, the Son of God, is here. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. Regrets and odd. Bitterness toward your parents. Whatever it was, you cannot end up like Absalom. You cannot do that. You can't do that. You cannot be like him. Ought and unforgiveness and bitterness in his soul. He had a root of bitterness in there. And he died because of it. It cost him his life. And 20,000 other people died with him. That's how bad ought is. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Let's do it. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me right now. The Bible says you got to confess it. Go ahead and confess it. Nobody's going to make an audit of it or tell you about it later. That's not like it's going to happen. Come on, the Holy Spirit can hear you say it. Just say it. Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me for what I did, carrying them out around my regrets, carrying around ought, carrying around bitterness, ex-wife, ex-husband, stepkids, stepdad, adopted dad, something wicked, something evil. You're going to repent of it right this second, right now. Come on now, just repent of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Lord God, I'm turning my back on my past right this second, and I'm going to transition into my new life in my father's family. I'm going to release my mother and my dad to the Lord. I'm going to release them to the Lord, and I'm going to let them go right now. And my heavenly father is now my parent, not my mom and not my dad. My heavenly father is my parent. The Holy Ghost starting to move. Just be patient and give him a minute. He doesn't like to be rushed. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus does not like to be rushed. So we give him a little time to move. Keep repenting. Just open your heart now and just keep repenting. He's starting to move now. The Holy Ghost starting to move. If you need to be healed tonight, please don't leave without prayer. If you need to be healed, we'll anoint you with oil, the Holy Spirit. And you can be healed. Regrets, ought, hatred, bitterness, root of bitterness, self-ought, self-criticism, self-ought. Disgusted with yourself. Come down to repent of it. Come down to repent of it. You don't like yourself. You don't like your looks. You don't like your body. You don't like your past. You don't like what you did in the past. You did what I did. You left a job you should never have left. You did what I did. You got mad, you got bitter, and you left that job. Go ahead and repent of it. Go ahead and repent of it. You are not to be like Brother Mike. Come on now. Satan in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. You cannot keep me from forgiving. You cannot keep me from repenting. You cannot stop me from releasing aught. You cannot stop me. Thus saith the Lord. Come on now, just confess it. Come on, reach out. The sacrifices of God are a broken heart. Psalms 51. The sacrifices of God are a broken heart. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Come on, King Ahab. King Ahab repented. He repented. Come on now. King Ahab, the most wicked king that ever lived. Ahab repented and God forgave him. You have the blood of Jesus. You got the blood of Jesus. You got the broken body of Christ. Turn from your wicked ways, says the Lord. If thou shalt hearken under the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right and keep his commandments and follow his precepts 
Thus saith the Lord, I will put none of these diseases upon you. I put on the Egyptians. For I am the eternal God who heals you. Come on now. Just repent of it. You don't like your body. You don't like your body. Come down here and repent of it. You don't like your intelligence. You think you're stupid. You think you're stupid. Come down here and repent of it. Come on down. You don't think you're you don't think you're good looking. You don't think you're smart. You're living with regrets. You're living with regrets. Come down here and repent of it. Hurry up. Move quickly. Just repent of it. Repent of it. Confess it. You got to confess it. Come on now. You got to confess it. Say it. Say it. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord God, help me. Help me. I got ought. I got unforgiveness. I'm like Absalom. I'm like Absalom. Oh my God, help me. No. I don't want somebody to stab me in the chest. I don't want to die an ugly death. No, Lord. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of that body right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body. Come out of there. Go in the name of the Lord. Satan, lose your hold of the man of God. Let go of him. Thus says the Lord, let my people go. Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Hear the word of the Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin. Then I will heal their land. Come on now, you got to move first. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. The Holy Spirit is standing right in front of you. He's standing right in front of you. He's in charge now. Okay, witchcraft. Come out of there, you witch. Sorcery. New Age. Witchcraft. Mormonism. Jehovah's Witness. Every evil spirit from every cult. I bind your power right now. I bind your power. I command you to come out in the name of the Lord. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Quickly. Move quickly. Spirit, move quickly. Come on now. Let's go. What's, what's um, going on? I'm trying to pray for uh, my cousin. My mom was here. Her niece has been trapped like with some demonic things in Mexico. And she's got a drug addiction, alcohol addiction. Um, but she doesn't want to come in here. So they were disturbed yeah. by some of the message. But, you know, it's like a demonic thing as well. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Megan. Megan, are they related to you? Yes, and she's got like this uh, oh, okay. sexual desire. Lost demons? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Father God, I have your vessel standing here. Megan's only hope. And I'm asking you now to take her love for Megan and give her the anointing of the Spirit now. Take a big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. 
fear come out. Fear of Megan's future come out. Come on out of there. Come out of her lungs right now. Fear of her dying. Fear of her going to hell. Fear of her facing judgment. All fears of Megan come out. I ask you, dear God, to anoint these hands with power to pray for Megan. In Jesus' holy name. You speak in tongues? No? Let's pray after me. Gurra Vasha. Beno Masi. Atu Vashaka. Ola Vasea. Melo Vati. Boyaba. Perfect. Let's do it again. And now you add some syllables on your own. You ready? Ala Mashandre. Vando. Vando Moshababa. Holy Spirit, come in. Keep talking. Boya Mashandra Vashimba. Unda Mashandra Vaba. Holy Spirit, come in. Anointing, come in. Anointing, come in. Holy Ghost, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Ola Mashandra Moshebisa. Yelo Radrasha Valadi. Emoshambino Moshatrasa. Give her the anointing, Lord, in these hands to heal. That's what she really wants. She wants to help people. That's her real desire. More than Megan. She wants to help more people than Megan. Thank you, Jesus. Heal her, Lord. Remove all doubt and unbelief from her soul right now. Remove it. Ando moshandrava. Vendo moshidebe. Yano moshebaka. Good girl. Keep going. Good. Thank you, Jesus. What's the story on this guy? Dustin? Mike? What's wrong with this guy? Yeah, he was into some witchcraft. I, I emailed art for his mom. You got bad art for your mom? Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Rana. Rana? Yeah. Uh, listen, um, when it involves your parents, yeah. you know what that get, does to you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, Julie. It's like the demons, uh, what? The demons put a curse. No, it puts a curse on you. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst one. Yeah. You going to repent of it? Yeah. What's her name again? Uh, Rana. Okay, ready? <laughs> Close your eyes. Open your mouth. <laughs> Father God. I want you to forgive this man. He has ought for his mother, and it's going to destroy his entire future. He's going to lose everything. And he hasn't repented of it. He's playing with fire because the devil is going to crush him just like Absalom right there. He's going to die ugly and early. And I'm asking you to forgive him and give him grace to repent of it tonight. Go ahead. Dear Jesus, forgive me for having ought on my mother. Come on. Good. Thank you, dear. Yeah. Love you. I command uh -huh. these demons to leave my body right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. And go. Go. <clears throat> this guy over here has ought for his mother. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I was doing great. But uh, uh, I was working on my miracle list today. Yeah. I'm up to like number six or something like that. Oh, good. And the lady who prayed for me right now... It was like she was there watching me do my miracle list and prayed for everything that I had written and and, and like, she, like she knew it. Oh, good. And uh, I just wanted to give that testimony. Now, what's still left in there? Yeah. Huh? What's still left in here? Probably a bunch of stuff. Right? Like what? Uh, uh, what's the main thing that needs to go? Lust, I think. For less for 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 things or 
uh, checking out women. Uh, uh, you have any spiritual goals in life? To do deliverance. You want to be deliver other people? Yes. Oh, is that what you want? Oh, that's great. Okay, ready? What's your name again? Michael. Oh, Michael, yeah. Father, I got Michael here, and uh, he wants a future ministering in the Holy Spirit. But he's never going to have it because you get this lust demon in there. See him in there? He's right there. This thing's got to go or his future is shot. And I ask you, God, Father God, to give him the gift of hate right now for lusting after material things, money, food, sex, whatever it is. It's blocking his anointing and his future. And I'm asking you to forgive him and give him the gift of hate. There, there he comes. Here we come. Come on out, devil. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Hold that. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out right now. Come out of there, you pervert. Go. Come out of his stomach. Get out of there. Let's go. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Hurry up. Get out of there. I hate you. Lust demon, I hate you. Come out of me. Now. I said, I hate you. Get out of my body right now. Hi, sweetheart. What's, what's wrong with you? Come out of there. What's wrong with you, hon? With me? Yeah. What do you need from God? Uh, I'm Kurt. We wrote, I'm Michael and Kurt. We came from Germany. Yeah, what because else do you I'm need? What's left in there? Huh? What's left in here? Come out of there. I don't know. <laughs> What's the symptoms? The symptoms. You got any negative bowel. symptoms? In my bowel? No. Is there anything wrong with you? Yeah, my feet and my back. Uh, when and did that start? Come out. When I was 14. When you were what? When I was 14 years old. 14? An what happened? I was in the, an injury with oh. a uh, trampoline. Oh, like okay. Did your back hurt? Yeah. Where? I L4, 5? Yeah, back issues here. Come out, Satan. Going all to the where at? Where, where's it at? Right there? Yeah. Right here? That's where the pain is? Where's the other pain at? Here, the hips. Right here? Yeah. How'd you hurt that? Trampoline? Trampoline. Yeah. Come on. Man. All right. Here's one, four more. All right. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Heal. Come out, devil. There he comes. Come on out. Come out of her back. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out of her back right now, quickly. Come out of that hip right now. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Come out right now. Come out right now, quickly. Come out of there quickly. Satan, loose your hold of her quickly. Come out of her back. Come out of her back right now. Come out of that back. Come out of her hip. There he is. Come out of her hip. There he goes. Come out of that hip right now. Leave her back right now. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of the body right now. Hurry up. Heal. 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 Come out and heal. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of that body quickly. Hold that. Come out right now, quickly. Heal. And heal. Come out of there quicker, you rotten devil. Come out quicker. I said faster. Come on, Bonnie. Come out of them hips right this second. Come out of her tummy. Come out of her tummy right now. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Heal. 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 
Heel. Come out. Come out of there. All right, check your back out. Check it out. Anything? Huh? It what? was fine, but sometimes when I sit a long, long time and stand up, then it's burning. Oh, okay. And I will see it. Come on over here. You sit down there. There you go. Sit down right there. All right, stand up. Stand up. In Jesus' name, heal. Okay, now, uh, uh, <coughs> step back a little bit. Come out right now. Hold on a second. I want to show you something. Come out of there right now. Come out of there quickly. Come out right now. Finish this off. We'll be right back. I got to show you something here. Come out of there. Hey, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I'm suffering a long time of bicycle and... A what? Of somebody with icebol and and uh, narcissism, as I was frustrated about it, and so. Did you repent of it? Yes, I repented. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they'll come right out then if you repented of it. Get out of that body right now! Here it comes! Come out of there quickly! There it comes! Thank you, Jesus! Quick! 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 Quick, 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 quick. It's good. Check your back out. Yeah, it's better. Okay, sit back down there. Thank you so much. Now, you pick up their legs like this, and you have to pick them up real gentle. Okay. And then uh, you find their ankle knuckle. Yeah. Remember that knob down there yeah. on the ankle? Yeah. You put your thumb just underneath it. Your thumb. No. This one? No, uh, both of them. Oh, Put your th right. okay. no, <laughs> yeah, your thumb under just under the ankle knuckle. Okay. Your thumb uh -huh. here, over here, oh, where the where the ankle knuckle is. Okay. Feel the knuckle. Yeah. You put your thumb just under it. Okay. Yeah. Then you kind of. Okay. So this gal's legs. Are okay. See how they're lined up? They're pretty even, yeah. Yeah, they're even. Okay. Yeah. So that's not what's causing her back pain. So it's either the lumbar or our, our muscles. See? Okay. Check, check it. Check it. Is it gone or is it still there? It still hurts there? Okay. Can you think of anybody in your past? That uh, you got any bad feelings about when you think about them? Yeah. Who's that? Uh, my my mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. What's yeah. her name? Imdat. Imdat. Imba. Imdat. Imdat. Yeah. Go ahead and repent of it. <coughs> yeah. Go ahead and repent of it. <coughs> there you go. Repent of it. <coughs> I repent of having bad feelings and ought for Ingnock. I repent of it right now in Jesus' name. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for what I've done. I'm so sorry. I will never do that again. I'll never do that again. I repent of it. I repent of it. Yeah, I repent of it. There you go. Come on. You can't get healed if you don't repent. You gotta repent of it. You gotta repent of it. You cannot have aught against your sister in law. That is a sin in the eyes of God. You gotta stop that. Repentance means to stop it. I repent of it. In the name of Jesus. How you doing? Um, I, I need to uh, take 
tramadol. I've been taking tramadol for years. When I, when, I, when I try and come off of it, I start going through the draws. Oh. How do I get rid of that? Oh, uh, that's a spirit doing that. Hey, this guy's got a addiction demon. He takes, he's been taking tramadol for years. Oh, it's a painkiller? Yeah. Tramadol, yeah. Yeah. Close your eyes now and just breathe out of your mouth. You filthy spirit of addiction, come out of him right now. There he is right there. You get out of my body right now. Unforgiveness and ought of any person. I forgive every one of them and all of them. Everybody and all of them. All of them. Everybody, including my husband, including the disappointments of my husband, being sick, not being well, and the exhaustion of having to live with him. I repent of it. I let my husband go. Let your husband go. Let your wife go. Let him go. Get out of that body right now. Come out, you foul man. There he is right there. Come out of the body right now. Come out of his throat. Come out of his throat. Come out of there right now, quickly. Quickly. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Keep coughing right now. Hold that. Hold that. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Tram it all. Come out of that body. And heal. There it goes. Heal. Come out of there. Get out in Jesus' name. Heal. Who else needs to be healed? She just got healed of her bad back. Bad back healed right here. Who's next? She just, we just revealed that she had a stillborn sister. Had a what? She had a stillborn sister that wasn't, that was born, right? Born, but didn't live. And she felt guilty. Oh, did you repent of it? She lived. What would that have to do with you? Oh, self-pity took over. I repent of it. God Almighty, self-pity will destroy me. No. No. Self-pity is a cancer. Go. Cancer, come out of me right now. Cancer, dying, the self-pity, the lies. I had nothing to do with my sister's death. Nothing. It's a lie. She had nothing to do with my crap. Go. Hey, what are you doing? What is happening here? Uh, check out your hip. Anything left? It's better, but it's not gone. It's not gone. Right, right here? Inside. Oh, okay. Other than your sister in law, who's the next one? Yeah, the sister in law. Huh? It was the sister in law. Yeah, who else? Somehow my sister. What do you. Why? She, she's not talking to me. For, uh, but why do you have ought for her? Because she won't I, I talk to you? I don't know if I have ought for her, but I mean, What do you, you have? Know, I, I, it hurts. You know, it hurts. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. Great. <clears throat> Father, I repent of carrying around wounds in my soul over my sister. I repent of it right now in Jesus' holy name. And let my sister go. And all her demons. There they come. Sister, come out. Sister, come out of me right now. Come out of there. You're not supposed to be in there anymore, you stinking devil. Stop making him talk. Come out of there right now. Stop it. He gets him talking and then his deliverance stops. Come out of that body right now. Tramadol. I'm tired of you. This is the end. It's over. Now come out. Come out of my body. Come out of here quickly. Come, come out right now, Satan. Get out of my body. Hurry up and come out of me. Stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. Come out right now. Stop it. Stop talking to me. I let my sister go right now in Jesus' holy name. I let her go in the name of the Lord. Out. Out. Out you go. Out you go. There we go. Out you go. Who's that guy? 
Who is that girl over there? Who's that girl over there, that one talking to Kelly? That's the girl from yesterday. Oh, that was we one yesterday? yesterday? How's she doing? She's, she's doing good, but her dog's getting attacked. That's why I brought Kelly. Her dog's getting attacked? Her dog. Okay, well, bring her up here, would you? Yeah. Come on there right now. You get on with my sister gone right now. Go. I love her, and I pray for her. Whether she talks to me or not is immaterial. Come on, sister. Yeah, sister. Yes, yeah, sister. Come on now. Come on, sister. Come on, sister. Come on there. Hurry up. Come on. Oh, my sister gone. Sister gone. Let's go. Let's go. What's he talking about now? I'm talking to him if he had any odd, any unforgiveness. Things like you, that. He doesn't have any of that anymore. No. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> no, he's past that. Yeah. All right, let's try your tongues again. He was speaking in tongues. Good. How you doing? Hey, I'm Jason. And Mike. I was going to church at Hagwish Baptist Church, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah, I, I didn't Whirly. know when Whirly, but I uh, knew the people who, uh, yeah. who were in the hall with him when they started yeah. that up and stuff. But, uh, yeah, he was great. I'm just wondering, have you dealt with a lot of people that have, like, digestive issues? And, like, yeah. they just can't, I can't get set free from this. I have, like, this inflammation and, like, burning and, like, food sensitivities and just, like... That's uh, fear demons. It's like a, in my brain, like fear. Yeah. It's usually fear demons. That's, uh, I do struggle with that. They hang around here. Stuff, you know? They usually hang around here. Yeah. Fear of what? Fear of um, just like I'm going, I'm in school now and stuff. Like I, I work fear like, what? in school. Fear of what? It could be just fear of what people think of me, like when I'm around people or like. Uh, you're like you're insecure? I'm not going to be smart enough or when I come across as not being smart enough. And then enough when the fear start when you were little? When did that start? Oh, uh, fear started at what age? When I was a kid, I would say. And I something triggered OCD it. And stuff. Oh. I had a lot of obsessive okay. Disorder, anorexia. At what age? Uh, at what age? When I was like two years old, my parents told me I was washing my hands obsessively. Oh, and, and your, like, was, your, was your mother abused? I had a fear of germs. Was your mother abused or your dad? Not that I know of. He never told me. Sure. Did they have fear demons? I mean, my dad's always been in fear. Like, he's always had fear. Like, I used to work in his business, and he, he was always, like, worried about, like, losing customers. Then like who people. hurt him when he was little? Did I what? Hurt him? Who hurt him? Huh? Who did? When he was little? Who hurt him? Your dad. Who hurt, who hurt my dad? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know anything about your dad? Past? Not like... Okay, not well, okay. It, sound, it, it sounds like you got the fear demon from your dad. I know when he was, he told me when he was a little, a little kid, his grandma used to like tell him, well, what are you going to do, Sonny, with your life? Like, you need to get it together. Like, Pressuring him. Yeah. What's your dad's name? Joe. Joe. Yeah. Joe's in there. Okay. <laughs> you think so? Okay. Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't want it in there You said your mother didn't have fear, but your dad did. No, my mom doesn't. She seems like she's came from chill. Came my from dad your dad. Very controlling and like, uh, That's yeah, fear. Yeah. That's anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> People that control others are afraid. Things. See? Like he's retired, he's gotten worse. Like he's worried no, about he... like birds coming up like on the house and you know, damaging and they're building nests. How old is he? He's 68. So yeah, he's got about 10 years left to be completely gone. They're just taking his mind. Really? And now they got you. Yeah, I mean, how do I get set free That's your dad. Okay. Close your eyes there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, see this big guy standing here. What's your name? Jason. Lord, I got Jason standing here, and unfortunately, his dad's here. The same demons that took his dad took him. Fear demons, anxiety. And they always go down to the guts. Intestines, stomach, bladder, kidney, they are always down there. They torment them the rest of their lives, just like his poor dad. He's losing his mind. Now pray for his dad right now, Lord. He doesn't understand demons. He doesn't know he has them in his brain. 
He doesn't know they're taking over his mind. They're giving him paranoia over nothing. They're manufacturing paranoia and killing his dad. And the only person who can save his dad is Jason. There's nobody else. Now I'm asking for the anointing so he can go cast those fear demons out of his dad and drive that devil out of his brain. And tonight, his dad must leave him. Tonight. Because you are his father, not his dad. You're his father. And I ask that you remove his dad from his soul tonight. And all of his dad's demons that came down to destroy his intestines, his stomach, and give him anxiety about his life in general. Classes, school, future, job, everything. They give anxiety to him over everything. And we bind your power, you filthy, fear spirits, in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, we bind your power. This guy's got fear demons from his dad. And I'm asking you to forgive him for having fear thoughts and believing them. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, I renounce my father's anxiety and his paranoia and all of the pain his parents caused him he got them demons from somewhere and now he gave them to me they transferred down to me and I want them out tonight right. now I take a big breath and breathe out of your mouth spirit of fear I command you in the name of Jesus come out of Jason come out of Jason Come out of my body right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out, you demon of fear. Now, come. Come out of my body right now. Come on, Jason, fight. Jason, fight. Get out of there. There's more in there. You're not leaving. She's not going back to Germany with you. Did you hear me? She can't go back with demon. This is crazy. You come out of there right now. I want every spirit from her entire family, mother, father, sisters, everybody, out. Out, everybody out, everybody, everybody out. Come out, come out, evil, come out of her. Evil, get out of that body now, evil, come out. Dad, you come out of me right now. I command you out of me, there you go. Come out of me right now, you spirit of fear. You gotta go now. Go, you get out of that body, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. You get out of there. Get out of there quickly. Hurry up. Hurry up. You got to fight. Come out right. Is there anything left in there? You sure? Did you get a bunch out? Well, I did. I guess I... Get a lot of uh, coughing. Did you take back your mind or are you still struggling? Go ahead and repent of it. Dear God, I repent of negative thoughts in my mind. I repent of not hating demons. I repent of not having the gift of hate for demons. I repent of it. I hate these spirits. I hate, there they come. I hate them now. I hate them now. I hate them now. I hate them. Come on now, you gotta hate. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. You must hate one of them. If you don't hate them, they will not go. They will not leave if you do not hate them. 
you get out of that body right now. Did you hear me? You lose this woman of God. You lose her healing ministry. Stop it. Stop blocking her annoying. Stop it. You spirit of food. You're trying to give her diabetes and high blood pressure. Come out of there. You demon of... Come out of there, you pig. Come out of there, buddy. Pig demons, go. Come out. Come out. Food demons. Spirit, come out. Spirit, come out. Spirit, come out. Come out of that body and get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body. Get out. Come out now. You get out of there. Food spirits. Go. There they come. Come on. Keep coughing. They're coming out now. Hi. Hi. How are you? What's wrong with you? No, no I'm just trying to. Hmm? I'm just trying to go. Trying to go what? Um, just have my errands to run. You got errands to run. Yeah. What's these errands in here? What's going on in there? Come on. Who hurt you? Lifetime. Started at what age? Who did it? Um, started with a neighbor kid and then just progressed from there. What do you do to you? I was, I've been molested. The neighbor molested you? At four? Four years old? Okay. And what was that kid's name? Brent. Hmm? Brent. Brent. Yeah. Close your eyes. There we go. Lord Jesus, you see this beautiful woman standing here? I know that's what you're thinking when you look at her. I can read your mind, Lord. She has a soft heart. She is a loving person. And the devil sent Brent to get her. He sent Brent to wound her. And hurt her. And Brent transferred into her soul a demon of rejection. And he has ruined so many of her relationships. So many people have betrayed her. And they've stabbed her in the back like Absalom got stabbed in the chest. All these people have hurt her. And they were all sent by the devil. And tonight, I'm asking you for a miracle. Every one of these people, we are going to forgive. Right this second, including and starting with Brent. Every one of them. There's a huge list of people who wounded her. Not just one or two, it's a laundry list. People she trusted that stabbed her in the gut. People that she relied on that abandoned her. And all of them are to come out tonight because this is her night to completely release Ott. Absalom didn't do it and it cost him his life. She will not die from this. She's not going to get cancer from Ott. Every spirit from Brent, I'm talking to you right now. I know you can hear me. I command you, you spirit of lust, you come out of that body now. Okay, breathe out of your mouth. Brent, come on up. Brent, come out. Brent. Brent, you pervert, I command you to come out of her. Come out, come out of her throat. Come out, you pervert. Oh, there it is. Come out, you pervert. Right now, hatred for Brent, I command you to come up. Come up right now. Come up. Come up, there he is. Come up right now. Brent, you come out of her right now. There he is. Leave her right now. After all these decades, you will leave her now. Brent, in Jesus' mighty name. Every person that molested her, every person that touched her body, I bind your power. Every spirit that transferred into her body, come out right now. There he is. Come on up. Come up out of her. Come up. Come on up. Quickly. Come on. Let's go. Come out, you pervert. Come on, you sex pervert. Come on there. Quickly. 
You get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of her lungs right here. Come out of her lungs. Every fear spirit that entered her when she was molested, you come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Every demon that molested her, every spirit that molested her, you sex pervert, come out of her body right now. Breathe out of your mouth. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly. There it is. Decades of pain and embarrassment come up. Come up out of her throat. Come out of her throat. Come out of there right now. Come out of her throat. Come out of her throat. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Come out and go. Come on. I forgive them. I release them from my body. I do it of my own free will. Come out of me right now. Spirit of fear. Fear of men. Fear of failure. Hating my body. Feeling ugly. I release you in Jesus' name. I release this evil now. Feeling ugly. Feeling scared. Come out of me. Right now. This is my night to be healed. This is it. Satan, lose your hold of her. Come out of that body. Satan, come out. Satan, I want you out at any cost. Come out of my throat. Come out of my throat. You sex pervert, adultery, fornication, and child molestation. Come out of me right now. Every ugly bad man that ever touched me, come out of me right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. Get out of my body in Jesus' mighty name. Come up. Come up them. I forgive them and I release my ought from my soul. I release the fear they gave me. I release the shame they dumped on me. I release it now. I give it to the Lord. I cast all my care upon Him for He cares for me. I release it right now in Jesus' holy name. Come out right now. I let it go now. I let it go now. You speak in tongues? I let it go now in the name of Jesus. Every demon from Brent, come out of me right now. Every fear of being delivered, you get out of me right now. Fear of being delivered, leave me now. Fear of being embarrassed, leave me now. Fear of being embarrassed, leave me now. Right now. I will not leave here with any unforgiveness for any of these people that abused me. All these people used me as target practice. They were sent by Satan to destroy me. They were plants of the devil. And for me to be healed, I have to forgive them. I have to. I have no choice. And I ask you to forgive them right now. Go ahead. Name their names and ask God to forgive them. Go ahead. Brent, I forgive you in the name of Jesus. Say it, sweetie. I forgive you, Brent, and I release you from my soul. Every one of them. Go down the list. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. You need prayer? Yes. What's going on with you, young lady? Well, I was here a few months ago, and yeah. I did get prayer. Um, For what? I got, well, I had a private session with Stephanie. Yeah, and what happened? It was a lot. I mean, I was there for three hours, but... Um, did something I, I, come out? I, well, I hope so. Oh. I, you know, I didn't what was bothering it. you? What was uh, bothering the, you? The, the thing that is bothering me now mm -hmm. uh, is the fact that she prayed for uh, diabetes. Uh -huh. So I went off my medication. And that was about, well, maybe now five, six months ago. Maybe did five she, months. she tell you to do that? Uh, no, no, no. You no, did no. it on your own? I did it on my own. You still I have diabetes? diabetes? I'm not a diabetic. But, what? Uh, I, <laughs> I don't claim to be a diabetic. No, I don't. I don't. 
But I have been taking medication for over 20 years. Like for diabetes? Years. Yes. Oh, okay. So, so uh, now listen, been... diabetes is usually related to uh, when you were younger. Did you ever used to hate yourself when you no, were little? I hated my parents, my dad. <laughs> well, your dad, what did he do to you? He was, uh, he was a very abusive father. He was an alcoholic. Verbal? Or uh, well, he... I was one of the younger kids, and so he didn't treat me as badly, but he treated my older siblings, my brothers especially. He beat them. He would beat moms. What was his name? My dad's name? Frank. Frank? Oh, okay. Name was Frank. Yeah. Now just close your eyes there. Lord, do you see this beautiful woman standing here? Her dad's demons got into her body. There he is right there. And that spirit gave her diabetes. Because when she was little, she was afraid of her dad. He caused her anxiety. He caused her anxiety. Now she's got diabetes from her dad, beating the kids, anger, fear, and that means her dad's demons are hiding in here, and they have to come out tonight. They have to come out tonight. Breathe out of your mouth. Atta girl. Lord, I ask you, to, is your dad alive? He's dead. It's too late, Lord, to pray for him. Your mom had diabetes, probably from your dad or from her dad. It usually comes from trauma of some kind. All right? What? He shot at her and stabbed her. He shot her and stabbed her. There it is. Thank you. What was his name again? Frank? Frank. All right. Frank has to come out. Frank has to come out. There we go. Yeah, how you doing? Good. How are you? Ah. What's going on with you, young lady? Nothing now. Nothing now. What happened? I um, had some resentments and stuff. I had some resentments and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of things that I was... um holding on to and mainly because I didn't know how to forgive myself for all my bad choices and I blamed myself for everything that you know had happened in the past mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. and um yeah. and then who did that to you as far as the resentments no blamed you for everything did that to you you did, did that to myself. yourself yeah, and I then did. somebody taught you to do that who um I don't know I guess it was my mom was she a nitpicker or a critical? Yeah, very, very much so. Did she kind of see the glass half empty instead of half full? Yes. Oh, much. what was her name? Sue. Sue, that's yeah. it right now. Turn right there. Close your eyes. You ready? Breathe out of your mouth. Father God, Sue placed a spirit of rejection in her soul when she was young because she was critical and negative. And she taught her daughter to turn on herself. And she did turn on herself. She spent years thinking bad things about herself, speaking bad things over herself. And tonight, her mother must be completely forgiven. What was her name? Sue. Susan? Is she still alive? Okay, Lord, I want you to hunt Susan down. Go get her. I want you to tell her that you understand her, you love her, and you want to heal her. And you want her to leave your daughter right now. Every spirit that came into your body from your mother has to come out now. Right this second. Susan, you get out of that body right now. See that insecurity, that fear of being embarrassed, that all came from your mother. 
You feel insecure. Uh, there, there she comes. She's about ready to come out. Susan, you leave your daughter right now. Her heavenly father is her parent. You are not her mother anymore. You are to leave her. There she is right there. It's all fear-based. Fear from mother being critical and negative come out of me right now. Every demon from my mother has to leave tonight at the deliverance center. This is my night to be rid of her. There it is right there. She's getting ready to come out. Come on, Mom. Susan, there she comes. Susan, hold that. <coughs> hold that. Hold that right here. Hold that. That girl. Come out, Susan. Come out right now. Susan. Susan. Go out there. You get out of there. You had a stillborn sister? I didn't know that. And then you dumped that on yourself too? Wow. What crap came on you from your sister? Your mother's attitude or something? Why did that tear you up? She what? Who escaped? Oh, you were jealous of her. Oh, no. You're going to repent of that right now because God wanted you to live so you could fulfill your destiny and minister to others. That was the mirror monster lying to you again. I wish I would have been. <laughs> hey, where are you going? I just need to sit for a second. What for? She broke her leg. My leg is broke. Oh, your leg is broke? Oh, have sit over here. Which leg is broke? How'd you break it? I fell off a ladder. Oh, you fell off a ladder? Yeah. Which one is it? This one. Where is it broken at? My whole What's it? Oh, you're... It's all metal now. Yeah. That's all metal? Yeah. It's a healing process. Hmm? It's healing. Oh, it's healing. Okay. Now, give me that. Yeah, no. Come down there. Just put your hands in there. There we go. Ready? Ready? Is this leg longer than that one? Hmm? You got it set right? Put it under the the knuckle, underneath the knuckle. Where is the knuckle at? Let's see. No, you're no down here. See, there's a the knuckle right there, underneath. That's the knuckle. Put it under the knuckle. Feel it? Okay, go under it, under the knuckle, right there. There. Oh, right there. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Now see the knuckle here, right there. Okay, now let me check this out. Okay, this one is a little longer than that one, okay? Are you ready? Ready? Okay. Lengthen. Thank you, Jesus. Lengthen. Come out. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Grow. Come out. Okay. Now, put your hand there. Heel, right here. There we go. Ready? Foot, heel. <coughs> heel. Heel. Two, two more. Go. Heel. Heel. Anything? Check it out. Check out your hand. Anything? What happened? What happened? What happened? Feel anything? Take off your shoes. You know, go walk down here. Faster. Faster. Come down here. This way. Faster. Any change? Is it better or worse? Is it worse or better? Oh, okay. Okay, have a seat over there. All right. Now, when you were young, did you have a bunch of bad feelings about your mother? No. My mother, when we were young, before yeah. I was, uh, later on in life, my mother was always there. She was a wonderful mother. Okay, and then after that, who did you have yeah, bad I, feelings about? 
my mom because I got into my addiction and all that and everything was her fault. You blamed her for everything? Oh, yeah, before, yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, you married? No. Okay, now go ahead and repent of it. Come on. There you good. Good, good, good. I repent of hurting my mother, blaming her for stuff. I was wrong. I betrayed her by getting on drugs, alcohol, addictions. That was my sin. I hurt her because of it. I'm sorry about that. I blamed her, Lord. I blamed her. I should have never done that. I brought a curse on myself. I break this curse off of me now. Boom. There, in Jesus' holy name. Stand up. Now check your foot out again. Anything? Is it worse, better, or the same? It's a little bit better, but it's still sore. Still sore. No, we're missing something. Now, after your mother, who did you hate? Who did you hate? Myself, big time. Because of everything that I put everybody through. Um, I mean, especially the ones that just wanted to love me, especially what I put my kids through. Go ahead, repent of it. Lord Jesus. I forgive myself for what I've done. Thank you for giving me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And heal. All right. Try it again. See where we're at. Anything? Worse, better, or the same? It's not painful. It's just tight. Like oh, it's tight? Like okay. So like okay. Yo. That doesn't hurt. Where's the lack of motion? That didn't hurt when you did that. Where's the lack of motion at? You said a lack. There's a no, lack of. It felt like it was I saw. It felt I felt it move. Yeah. We were it feels it like a. What's wrong with it now? Nothing. It looks. Nothing. What's wrong with it? Could you do that before? No. Okay. I could barely walk on All right, that's it then. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. No. How's that going? How's that going? How's that going? Are you going to have another It's a miracle. She was almost like Christopher Reeves, like what? Really? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, go fast. Ah, yeah, girl. She didn't walk like that now. Work it out, hon. That's a Holy Ghost. This gal had metal, metal in her foot. It's all healed up. She had her foot metal plates in there. Her foot got healed. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Here, there's a bunch of heathen here. We got to fix them. Raise your hand and you lead the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing me, Lord. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the Holy Ghost healing me. This is my body broken for you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sweeter. Louder, sweetheart. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my foot. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my foot. This lady had a metal plate in her foot. She got healed right here. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, YouTubers, here's the, here you got your bad foot. Who's got a bad foot? Thank you, Jesus. Who's got a bad foot? Nobody? Oh, shoot. No more. Who's got a bad back? Anything else? Shoulders? Give me something. She doesn't take the metals in there anymore. She said she can move her couldn't be before. Here, sit down, sit down, we'll down and out. see if you can find it. We'll find out. See if you can find the metal. Hey. Hey.
Can you get a camera and give me a picture? A picture. Come on. Come out, devil. <laughs> Can you find that metal in there? Hunt it down. Where's it at? Where? Well, it's moving normal now. That's metal right there? Is that the scar? <laughs> Hold on a second. Can you? Yeah, okay. Put your foot up there. Had a girl. There you go. Thank you. Send that. To me. All right. Let's pray for that scar there. Turn the light on it. Who's got a light? Got a light on there? All right. Let's pray for that scar. Ready? Thank you, Lord, for healing this foot. And whatever you did with that metal in there, I don't know, but it's whatever you did fixed something. So now we need that scar to go. And what's this thing? What is that? My tattoo. For what? I don't know. I got it when I was young, not that bright. Oh, okay, go ahead and repent of it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Father, I ask for forgiveness here for a stupid tattoo. Forgive the stupid tattoo. In Jesus' holy name. Jesus Marn name. my body up. Please forgive me. All right. And heal. Thank you. Heal. Go on. Scar, go. Anything? You feel anything? Nothing. Okay. It just it feels better. It just. Okay, so maybe he wants to keep the scar. Okay. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's take one last victory walk. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for healing my ankle. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> YouTubers, listen. You got a bad foot tonight? This foot night at the Deliverance Center, apparently. Why don't you go for it? Just move your ankle around, your foot, your knee. Put your hand on it right there. Mark 16 says, These signs shall follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay, I laid hands on that gal's ankle. Boop, it recovered. I never healed anybody. I can't heal anybody. It's not even possible. It's not possible for me to heal anybody. I have no healing powers of any sort or any kind. All healings come through the broken body of Christ, and the Spirit of God does it all. HardcoreChristianity.com. Go to the website quickly. I need you to read two articles, How Satan Controls the Mind, number one, and number two, Satan's Counterattack. You'll get hit within 48 hours of this service. You've got to be ready for it. He'll hit you mentally or physically, trying to steal everything you've got tonight. Remember, you are not to be like Amnon, Absalom, or Solomon, or any of the other children of David. You are to be like Christ. See you next time.